Symmetric leaps and upward force and all you need a power chords and a beat song and a minor key the secret is the melody hang on hang on what do you mean can you anticipate this scene Hello and welcome to another episode of How Was It Written with Lee Pat. Today we talk about Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. And of course, we don't know how it was written, but we can learn a thing or two from how it works so that we can write the next Smells Like Teen Spirit. To start with, power chords. We don't have the usual triads, minor or major, we just have the root of the chord and the fifth of the chord. And then from the first chord to the second chord, we have a leap of a perfect fourth. And then this cycle is repeated from A flat to D flat. So we get. And the interesting thing is that within this cycle, there is another cycle in the middle voice. If we so the root of the first chord becomes the fifth of the second chord. And so if you play this like this. We get this Other cycle interlocking with to create something quite hypnotic and the sound of the harmony because of these fifths and these fourths is very raw very primitive very visceral in fact if because the chords change so quickly if we play First two chords together, we get F sus4, the root the fourth and the fifth, which same notes in a different order give us B flat sus2. And again in these chords there is there are no thirds, uh, there there are no colors, it's only the basic primitive force of the fourths and the fifths. And the interesting thing is that if you double the fifth uh, of any of these power chords, if you stack a second fifth on top of the first, you get this chord, which is actually a sus2 chord spread out. What is interesting is that this ninth, this uh, suspended second, features very prominently in the melody. So this is the ninth of F, and before that we have of B flat in fact the melody comes from the scale of the song the first four chords give us these notes and the melody adds G natural the last note of the scale which is the F natural minor scale that gives us the key of the song, but the melody, uh, just as the chords don't use the thirds, the melody shies away from the thirds as well. It shies away from this more mellow sound. And it uses, for example, for F, we have the flat seventh and the fifth. Only for
for D flat we have the third. But then again for F we get we have the flat six and the fourth. For B flat we have the flat seventh. For uh, A flat we have the ninth. And for D flat we have the major seventh and the sixth and the fifth. So the melody underlines this sense of unease, this uh, feeling of angst that is the subject matter of the song. Just like the harmony, the melody embodies the subject matter of the song. And another thing that's interesting about the melody are these big leaps that happen. This is a big leap in the melody which creates tension and interest. And to resolve it, we go back to the beginning of the leap and then go down the scale. these um, repeated runs down the scale and the same thing happens in the chorus this is this is a huge leap but again we go back to the beginning of the leap Of course, on top of that, we use these um, very um, logical melodic cells, very short melodic motifs of two notes, two notes, two notes, going down, and then they are repeated. Um, and this gives some sort of structure to the melody, but then there are these huge leaps to create tension. And by far the most interesting and the most important thing in the melody is the fact that the notes don't fall on the beat. They fall all around the beats, but not on them. So there is a lot of anticipation, a lot of syncopation like this. The end of each phrase falls just before the beat. So instead of Uh, the notes fall on the beat and the actual melody the notes fall on the ands between the beats if we have one and two and three and four and two and 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 four and two and 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 four and so this is the verse in the pre-chorus we have Anticipation, a lot of syncopation, a lot of accenting the weak beats two and four and the subdivisions of the beats, the ands in between one, two, three, and four. And of course, this is also very noticeable in the iconic riff, which starts uh, surely enough on the one, but then accents the weak beats two and four and the subdivisions in between and here we have a subdivisions by four so we have
some of the reasons why this song is so great and why we'll still talk about it 30 years later. Hope you've learned something. I'll see you next time in another episode of How Was It Written. Until then, get writing and subscribe and share the video if you found it useful and educational. Thanks. See you next time. Bye-bye. Peace.